Hey gamers, it's been a hot minute since I uploaded, but it's not because I haven't been trying. For the most part, anyway. So before my channel completely dies again, let me take you through what I've been doing since my last video. During my last video, I hinted that I was also working on a new game. It was actually for a game jam with a cash prize. I'm actually super happy with how this game turned out, and I'm actually also working on a devlog for this one, so I'm not going to talk about it too much here. For this game, I worked on it with a team, but there are a few reasons that I haven't released the video yet. Firstly, we were wary of promoting our game due to one of the rules of the jam being very vague. It just claimed that you could be disqualified for vote farming or engaging in any other activity that artificially inflates the entrance score. That never cleared up if that included making YouTube videos or anything like that, so we just waited. It's been almost two months since it ended at this point though, so it's not really a good excuse anymore. I honestly just got burnt out of the game after working on it so much and focused on other things. While I waited for the ratings for that jam to finish, I began working on another game and two other videos. The first video was going to be about the tools that I use as a game developer, but I really just wasn't feeling that one at the time. I'll probably rework it a bit and finish and release it soon though. The second video and game go hand in hand. The video was going to be about me creating the same game in Game Maker Studio 2, Godot, and Unity to see which game engine was the best for me. GMS2 is the game engine that I've worked with the most and it's the one that I was most comfortable with so I started there. I implemented a very simple platformer player controller using the same system that I use in basically all of my games. Since I knew the most about how GMS2 worked, I was able to implement a mechanic that I've never done before, one-way platforms with relative ease. They were pretty Pretty janky and the player could partially get stuck on them, but I was planning on fixing that later. Spoiler alert, I didn't. After that, I implemented hazards that fell from the sky and flew across the screen. I made some art based on the logos for each of the engines, and Unity's took me forever and it still doesn't look good, but after that I made some sound effects before I dropped the project due to disinterest. I just wasn't really jiving with the game and I really didn't want to make it three times. I think I might come back to this one in the future though with a new game, but for now it's shelved. Speaking of shelves and keeping food on them, let's talk about today's sponsor. Are you drowning in spreadsheets, text docs, diagramming tools, and whiteboards? Are you tired? of relying on guesswork to tweak values, and are you ready to start using science? Do you want a reliable way of predicting player actions even after the thousandth iteration? Are you just a really cool person? Well, machinations might just be what you're looking for. It'll help you rapidly prototype and balance your player's experience without having to write a single line of code. Machinations has helped with so many distinguished game developers just like yourself save up to 90% in balancing and iteration time. That's not all, dear folks. There's hundreds of ready-built templates and prefabs to perfectly cater to your game specific needs. Work in a team? Easily work together through the live collaborative editing feature to make edits in real time a la Google Docs. It's extremely easy to pick up thanks to their extensive documentation, YouTube tutorials, and regular webinars. Still aren't convinced? Try it yourself for free using the link in the description. Predict the unpredictable with machinations. <coughs> anyway, after that, for the month of October, I decided that I wanted to make a horror game with the graphical style inspired by retro games and consoles consoles like the PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64. Aside from this and wanting to have the game be first person, I had no other direction for the game. It actually made me kind of nostalgic working on games like I used to when I first started. Now I tend to try to plan out a lot of the game before I even start prototyping. I started off by creating a new Unity project and pulling up a Brachius tutorial because I've never made a 3D game before and had no idea what I was doing. I made a simple first person movement system using said Brachius tutorial and it ended up working pretty well. After that, I didn't really know what to do next so I started playing around with Pro Builder to create an environment. I had seen other people use this to plan out levels before properly modeling them, so I decided to do the same for this project. The next thing I did was set up a lighting system since I knew I wanted it to be dark and spooky. Unity has a built-in lighting system, so I made a spotlight parented to the player, but the world wasn't dark enough. My first attempt at darkening the world was setting the directional light to come from the bottom, and that worked until you looked up. I ended up learning about the lighting rendering settings and started messing around with things. In addition to making the scene darker, I also found the fog and render distance options and thought they really gave off that retro Silent Hill-like vibe. Later on, I noticed that these old games had pixelation around the edges and models due to the screen resolution being smaller, so I created that effect with the help of a tutorial from Matalaski. I also got the idea to give the flashlight a flicker effect. It took longer than I like to admit because I started out trying to over-engineer it, but it ended up looking pretty cool in the end, I think. The doors would probably be the next logical things to do, so I started with the least logical part of it I could think of. 
the door animations. After I made those, I spent a very long time creating an interaction system. I followed a tutorial by Dapper Dino to create a diverse system using Raycasts. It was a fantastic tutorial, except for the fact that it didn't work. In all seriousness though, the only thing that didn't work was the Raycasts because I had a first person camera. I took an hour trying to debug it. Eventually, I looked up another Brackis tutorial on first person shooting Raycasts, and I fixed it in two minutes. I made it so the player could open doors before I got started on an inventory system. It's an extremely simple list that just stores a string related to the object. After allowing the player to pick up objects and add them to their inventory, I gave them functionality by making locked doors. They work exactly how you'd expect. I can set a door to be locked and then set it to be unlocked when a player interacts with it if they have a specific item in their inventory. I started making some 3D models in Blender to make the environment, but I realized that I didn't know how they would work in game. Don't get me wrong, I definitely enjoyed making them and I want to learn how to 3D model and use them in future games, but I had no idea how they were going to scale in game or how I was going to texture them. I probably should have brought a reference to the player in before I did these, but like I said I had never done anything in 3D before. I just didn't want to learn these things for this project which will require a lot of models and textures. I was really just in the mood for the code side of this project. It's a real shame that I dropped it too because I was having so much fun with the project and learning this new code and learning how 3D games worked, but I just dropped it instead of doing the logical thing which would be to ask someone else to do the modeling for me. It's too late now though unfortunately. Halloween has almost passed by the time that I'm recording this and it has passed by the time you're seeing it. I'll probably try to make a game like this with my plans for it in the future however. The last video that I started to work on before this one was about Animal Crossing. I've been in a pretty bad place struggling with motivation, so I thought working on something different but within my comfort zone would help with that. I was also going through a I want to do more things than just game dev phase again. I was going to make a video about me resetting my Animal Crossing New Horizons island, but I got through the first week of recording and scripting, and I had started to edit, but I decided not to go through with the video. I knew it wasn't going to do well, and I didn't want to pour my heart into it if it was going to do nothing but hurt my channel. Maybe one day, if I'm famous enough, people will watch whatever I put out. It did actually help me get back into the mood of making things though, and reminded me why I actually like making videos in the first place, so it wasn't for nothing. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I've got some more planned and hopefully they don't take as long to come out as this one did. Bye.